Good morning everyone, uh, welcome to Vassal Live, my name is John, it's great to be able to welcome you, great to have you uh, with us today. Uh, we welcome each other because we believe in a God of welcome, uh, who in Jesus welcomes us uh, into his grace and mercy and love. So whoever you are, uh, whatever kind of place you're starting from, you're welcome to join us uh, today. Uh, throughout the month of August, we've got some guest speakers that have been uh, speaking and ministering among us and some guest worship leaders as well uh, from So Sound of Wales. Uh, and we've got uh, Jess Morgan this morning, who's going to lead us in a time of sound worship. Uh, and then it's great to be able to welcome Raf as our guest speaker today. Some of you will remember uh, Raphael. He was a student with us for a summer. Uh, if you're struggling to remember him, uh, he's a great preacher, but he was also the butler in a uh, holiday club we did about superheroes. Uh, so it's great that he'll be ministering to us today. Uh, two different passages, uh, one from Genesis chapter 12 and another from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So you may want to get those ready uh, for, for later in the service. Uh, but Raph has got a great heart for the Lord and a real love for God's word. And so uh, he'll be a real blessing to us uh, as he leads us uh, this morning. So let's just start to open our hearts to God uh, and prepare to, to meet with him. God's word tells us, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Good morning, everybody. We're gonna spend a few moments in sang worship now as we turn our eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face. There's a lot going on in the world right now and this is a moment for us to just reflect on him.
The Call of Abram. Then the Lord told Abram, Leave your country, your relatives, and your father's house, and go to the land that I will show you. I will cause you to become the father of a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and I will make you a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot and all his wealth, his livestock and all the people who had joined his household at Haran and finally arrived at Canaan. Travelling through Canaan, they came to a place near Shechem and set up camp beside the oak at Moray. At that time the area was inhabited by Canaanites. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I'm going to give this land to your offspring. And Abram built an altar there to commemorate the Lord's visit. After that, Abram travelled southwards and set up camp in the hill country between Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar and worshipped the Lord. Then Abram travelled south by stages towards the Negev. One body with many parts. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up only one body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves and some are free. But we have all been baptised into Christ's body by one spirit, and we have all received the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I am not a part of the body because I am not a hand, that does not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, I am not part of the body because I am only an ear and not an eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? Suppose the whole body were an eye, then how would you hear? Or if your whole body were just one big ear, how could you smell anything? But God made our bodies with many parts and he has put each part just where he wants it. What a strange thing a body would be if it, uh, if it had only one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some of the parts that seem weakest and least important are really the most necessary and the parts we regard as less honourable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect from the eyes of others those parts that should not be seen, while other parts do not require this special care. So God has put the body together in such a way that extra honour and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. This makes for harmony among the members, so that all the members care for each other equally. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it, and if one part is honoured, all the parts are glad. Now all of you together are Christ's body, 
and each one of you is a separate and necessary part of it. Hello everyone, this is uh, Reverend Rafael de Lima, or Raf, as you uh, got used to, to know me. It's a pleasure to, to be here with you today, sharing on this uh, very special uh, moment and very strange times for the church. Uh, but uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. I want to talk to you about something that's very, very uh, caught my heart in the last a few months and 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 it is actually something that we are running through our own local community at the moment we're looking at uh, our mission statement and our mission statement reads as god's family each with a part to play we commit ourselves together to grow like jesus in our everyday lives to show the love of jesus in every relationship and witness to jesus in our own communities and I really love this mission statement because it shares so much of what we believe as Christians um, and what I believe as a Christian in today's, in today's, today's uh, world. Um, and uh, when we talk about, uh, about family, we, we see that passage that was read to you. Uh, Abraham was called uh, to be a blessing, to be a blessing to all the families in the world. God said he would bless all the families in the world through Abraham. And, and we see that throughout the Old Testament, God uh, is with Abraham and Abraham's family, uh, going through a process of calling them uh, into a fulfilling that promise. And ultimately, he fulfills that promise in Jesus, that Jesus becomes uh, the new uh, Israel. And uh, through Jesus, all the families in the world, all the peoples in the world is blessed. And I love talking about family. Uh, and uh, I don't know about you, but in, in, um, in my house, in many households, I believe, there is always a, a room that, um, that becomes the family room. And, and some, some families is the living room, other families is, is, is a bedroom or a, or a sport, uh, a space that uh, is shared. Other, other places is the living room where you do all the watching and all the talking. In, in my house was always the, uh, the kitchen. The kitchen was the place that we came together to eat and, and to reflect and to talk. Uh, I remember having many conversations with my my parents in, on, on the on the dinner table. Uh, some good conversations, some hard conversations, and sometimes even some explosive conversations where I remember storming out and and just leaving the room completely because that conversation was uh, you know so challenging to to my to my own behavior. And uh, as as part of a, as part of the family of, of God, uh, I believe that this is partially what our churches are for. Churches are a spaces where the family of God uh, comes together to meet in a very special way, to be challenged, to have those deep, hard conversations, to transform uh, our own behaviors, sometimes through love and passion, sometimes through anger. And um, in, in our churches, we, we share together of that very special meal that Jesus established and left for us. Um, we've, we've been doing this through, uh, through the internet and it has become such an important part of, of uh, our own identity as Christians to share that meal. Um, and we, we do that and, and, and not being able to do it together with people has become really difficult. Uh, so um, family, what is your family? Uh, what is your Christian family? I believe that we are all part of this family. The, the second part of the, the reading that you've had today talk, talks about different parts of the body playing uh, different roles. And uh, I don't know about you, but I've always been uh, uh, able to join in with uh, team sports. And I love team sports. Uh, I played football, uh, I played uh, volleyball, uh, I played uh, basketball, uh, to all different sorts of degrees of playing. And, and, uh, and with team sports, um, you ha always have, uh, within, within the team, you have players uh, 
exerting different functions. So you have a goalie, a keeper, you have a defender, you have a midfield, you have a striker. And each footballer, each each role is determined by that player's ability and, and to, to maximize his potential. Uh, if the if the everybody wants to be uh, a striker, you might score lots of goals, uh, but you might never win the game because there is no defense. If everybody was goalies, you might uh, or have a, a great defense, but you wouldn't win any games because um, everybody would be on defense. And this balance between um, dif different roles and different functions is what communicates uh, that the body is balanced, uh, that the, 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 the team is balanced, and what makes the team uh, win uh, games. Um, uh, the, the, this again comes together as, 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 as family of God, each with a part to play. We all have our own part uh, to play. And uh, in this family, we are challenged to discover what our place here on earth is. Think about that thing that keeps you awake at night. Uh, think about the things that burns your heart with passion. Think about that thing that uh, you cannot live without. Well, this is your gift. This is your passion. This is what keeps you alive. This is what uh, makes you who you are. And sometimes we, we kind of go around life trying to discover that um, and uh, trying to see what, what our place, what our parts to play is, and we, we never find it. Um, and sometimes we don't find it because we are either lazy, not looking for it, or we are happy with what we've got. And uh, if you're happy with what you got, if God is giving you a gift and, and, and you know that he's given it you this gift, you know what your part to play is, it's great. But if you're just roaming through life, um, not discovering what your passion is, not discovering, not exerting the, your your passion. Uh, you're going to be a very, you're going to have a very unfulfilled life, because all of us in this family and this team of God have our part to to play. And this last part of the of our of of, of our mission statement is is uh, is also. Uh, very important because it is about discipleship, uh, and discipleship is just is just a, a, a fancy word to, uh, to to tell us that we need to be more like Christ, more loving, uh, more challenging towards others, um, following on on the footsteps of, of Christ. He said himself, "If you want to be my disciple, you 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 must pick up your cross and, and follow me." And he said that. Uh, in a context where uh, people were dying um, when they, they picked up their crosses, in the sense that we, we, we have to leave uh, our passions to Christ. But then you, you tell me, Raf, you just told me that I have to discover and fulfill my passion. Uh, if I hand my passion to Christ, where are we going to be? Well, I'm telling you that if you hand your passion to Christ, he will make it bigger and he will make it happen. Um, I remember when, when I was uh, uh, a teenager and I became a Christian and I became fascinated for uh, people leading worship and I thought this was my, my calling, my goal and, and I started playing the guitar and I couldn't get it. Uh, I, I tried to train, I had teachers and tutors and people telling me and I just couldn't get it right. Uh, until I, I surrendered it to, to God and I said, God, if, if you want me to do this, if you want me to, to learn this, I've got to have to surrender this to you and, and, and you're going to have to do this with me. And after I'd done that, I, I started to learn and, and not just learn to play the guitar, but learn how to truly worship, uh, learn how to allow the Holy Spirit to move. In, 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 in worship, enabling people uh, to connect with God, where to, to have that meeting with God. 
and that was uh, part of my calling, I guess. Uh, and that has been developing since, and I believe that there are other things that are coming. So, message for us for today. Remember that you are part of the family of God. If, you are, uh, if you're not sure if you're part of the family of God yet, um, put your knees on the floor and pray. Um, surrender your, your gifts, your, your time uh, to Jesus because he will use you in his team. And as you do so, he will enable you to develop and grow to heights that you never imagined that you could have grown. So let me pray for you today. And Father, may we always remember that you have called us to a family, a family of love, a family of challenge and growth. May we play our part in, in your team. Whatever we are, may we know that uh, we are a defender. If we are a defender, may we defend with our hearts. If we are a striker, may we strike with all our hearts. If we are a musician, may we play music with everything that we have. If we are a talker, may we talk. If we are a quiet prayer, may we pray. May we use our gifts for your kingdom's sake. And may we develop in our devotions. May we grow in discipleship. May we be closer to our master, walking in the dust of his sandals, so that one day we may come close to the statue that Jesus wanted for all of us. We pray that in your mighty and precious name, Lord Jesus Christ. There is a time for everything. There is a time for fighting and a time for being fought for. This uncharted season, unwelcome storm, untrodden path, there is a time to burrow, to seek shelter, to draw closer to the one who loves us, who holds us in his hands. We are held alongside those battle scarred from the times before. Let us learn their resilience. Brought to their knees by disease, but raised up by our restorer. Shake off the dust and stand up. We have weathered. We have won. Whatever is has already been. And what will be has been before. A season of spring with the bleakness of winter. A time for limitation for lockdown, to liberate life, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to be alone, though not for loneliness, a time for breathing in and a time for breathing out, the simple rhythms of release, there is a time for grounding, there is a time to learn, to listen, to weave and work and wait, to treasure and ponder, to potter, to hibernate. And for some, there is a time of hard graft. There is chaos, there is panic, there is not enough time. There is the weight of the world on your shoulders, there are too many people trusting you. There is not enough of you, but even you are not alone. There is a time to hand over heavy burdens. There is a time for rest. There is a time for extravagant gratitude, for applause, for lifting and uniting our voices, for that is all we can do for now. There is a time for mourning. There is a time for loss, for grief. These are colours on the canvas too. There is a time for raging, for rude, raw pain. This is not fair. They did not have enough time. There is a time for healing. 
Take it. Take your time. Let it in. He is the beginning and he is the end. Death is not a road untaken, nor is it the end. Fear and worry are the thieves of time. Their way of worming within its wearying. There is a time for courageous peace. There is a time for sleeping through the storm. The winds and the waves still know his name. Be still. This is a time to dig deep, to invest in play, in people, to rediscover our roots, to adapt, to invent, to fall back in love with simplicity, inventive in scarcity, to dance like no one's watching, because they're not. The time to unfurl, to plant. There is a time for rainbows raining over windows, for remembering promises that have been, that will be fulfilled. There is always time for hope. There is a time for starting again. And spring is not waiting for us, is not leaving us lonely in winter. Time has not stopped. The sun blazes, oblivious. Bluebells bloom in defiance. Babies are born. Deer are the citizens of cities. Rivers run clear. Nature returns. Reclaims and all over the earth thrums with new life. And, in time, this season will give way to the next. There will be a time of stepping out. Sunlight, unrationed. Open doors, open arms. A new nation breathing out the changes we have inhaled. Hailing a brave new weathered world. No more emotionless motion, nothing taken for granted. The seeds of tomorrow are planted. There will be a time of celebrating the extraordinary, ordinary things. Not a long forgotten dream or seen through a screen, but a fingertip away. A handshake. A hug. A proper British cue. A pint at the pub. But this is tomorrow. There is time for that too. There is a time to emerge from the safety of your cocoon, transformed, but not too soon. In your heart, God has placed eternity. So for now, the time is to wait and see. Some of you will recognise the name Salt Mine from the pantomimes that we've had at Bethel uh, over the years and have been able to invite schools to. And uh, a woman called Emily from there was inspired to write uh, that reflection that there is a time. And, uh, it was a real blessing to me and uh, they've allowed us to, to share it here today. And so I hope it was a real blessing uh, for you as well. Well, thank you so much to Raf uh, for his word to us this morning. Uh, we're just about to head off for the last but one time to Camp Freedom uh, as we finish this part of Moses' journey uh, together. Uh, and then next Sunday is an all together service where we'll be uh, rounding up uh, Camp Freedom together and everybody that's been part of that journey uh, is, is welcome to join us. Uh, so I hope you're able to, to join us for that as we celebrate uh, the summer together. Uh, please do keep thinking and praying about this uh, online Alpha course that starts mid-September. Uh, is there somebody who is just one ask away, uh, somebody that you could invite uh, a, a, along to come? Please do think and pray uh, about that as we near the start uh, of that course together. Such an exciting time and opportunity for us uh, as a church. Uh, in the meantime, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're going to end this morning again with the words of the grace together. Now, now may, may the, the grace, grace of the Lord, of Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, the love of God, and, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us all, evermore. Amen. 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 Amen.